I don't know if you could see that. Kai just went over to the Jeep, the doors closed, and he just jumped up and threw himself at the Jeep. Kai, we're not going for a ride. We can't. There's no gear oil in the diff. Okay, hang on. Totally at an incline, so I don't know how this is gonna work, but we're gonna make it work. Red puppy, is it gonna work? We're gonna make it work. I would say good morning, but once again, I'm filming at like, I think it's almost six o'clock, so it's technically like more the afternoon. Kai, what's wrong? Hey, come here. Come here with me. Yeah. Right now, actually, I finally decided to crack down on the differential fluid. So I drained the old fluid yesterday and I just got it all cleaned up. This video is going to be about my Jeep. It's gonna be just like a quick review of what I've done to it and different things like that. Cause I know a lot of you have been like asking me questions about it. You know, just little things like, is it automatic or standard? Is it a four liter, four cylinder? Just, you know, different things like that. And I've actually done a lot of work to the Jeep. This isn't gonna be about my Overland setup. I will, I would really like to do a video about that, but I'm gonna wait to show my setup for when I actually have everything set up. Cause right now I'm still kind of working on the organization and stuff. Um, I have my bed here and everything of course, but like the cooler for example is about to get popped out and it's gonna be a fridge. So I'm gonna do that video in the near future, but I just wanna talk about the Jeep itself and what I've done to it what makes it different than a factory, you know, all the all the modifications I've done and all the work I've done since I bought this Jeep, which has been a lot. Okay, anyway, I'm rambling now. So, my Jeep. So first off, my Jeep is a 1993 Jeep Wrangler YJ. I cannot prove this for a fact, but ever since I bought it, I have assumed it is a Sahara. From all the research I can do, it seems to be a Sahara. The color, as well as the hardtop full doors, it has AC from the factory. And when I bought it, the interior was a tan kind of vinyl leather interior. So I'm assuming it was a Sahara. It was also an automatic. So I'm gonna say it was a Sahara, a four liter, three speed automatic Sahara with air conditioning. Now, when I bought the Jeep, it was this gold pinstripey Jeep with a tan hardtop and full doors, but everything on it was like messed up. Hi, puppy. The doors were busted. You couldn't close them. I think it was just the driver's side. It might have been the passenger side too. It had a huge dent in the um, fenders. I actually had to replace those. It, it just needed a lot of work. It had just got the lift on it that I still have. I think it's about a four inch, maybe a three inch lift on here. The owner said it was a four inch, but it's really hard to tell. I do not know the brand of the lift or leaf springs I'm running. I'm assuming they're not a very high end one. And I would really like to up, upgrade to like a BDS lift if I can, but at the moment it's just not in the budget. As far as um, work I've done to the Jeep, I think pretty much every minor component on the Jeep has been replaced or repaired at some point. I did replace the front and rear rotors. All that maintenance is done. All the basics pretty much. As far as my transfer case, I am running right now a slip, an upgraded Adams front and rear drive shaft. The front is like heavy duty, I believe. And then I think the rear is the extreme duty. It's top of the line of the Adams drive shaft. I have a slip yoke eliminator on my transfer case that I installed. I have not done any modifications to the transfer case. Aside from that, I would like to do a four to one upgrade to get that really low crawl gear, but I didn't even know that existed when I did this. So all I have is a slip yoke eliminator that I installed. It has 33 inch tires, um, BFG Goodrich KO2. So 33 by 12.5 at um, a 15 inch rim. So that's what I have on there. And then the rims are just um, basic generic black steel rims, I believe. I don't really know the brand. It's not very high quality, but they get the job done. For my bumper, I have an LOD off-road expedition rear bumper tire carrier. I have all the accessories on it. So I have the cooler rack and the jerry can mount. I installed that myself and then Jeff has helped me weld it. Here in the near future, we are going to be modifying the brackets on it so it will be able to stand up to all this abuse I'm gonna put on the frame because I think it definitely needs some kind of structural support. On the roof rack, it's actually a custom roof rack that was completely stemmed from a Smitty. And then, and then the 
camera battery died. Yeah, so my camera battery died, so I'm gonna go charge that, and then I'll be right back with you. BRB. What are you smiling about, puppy? Huh? What are you smiling about? What are you smiling about? Guy's literally just happy to be involved. He could care less about what's going on. You cute puppy. You're a cute puppy, Kai. A lot has changed since I started recording. So, I'm back now. Um, so when I first started recording, it was safe to be out here, and now, now apparently it's not as safe because I immediately started getting eaten up by mosquitoes um, right here. So there's a little bit of green there because that's aloe vera gel because one of two things happened. I either got bit right below my lip or I'm starting to get a cold sore. I don't know which. Either way, a paranoid, um, a mosquito bite right there would really, really stink but a cold sore would be worse, so I'm really hoping it's a mosquito bite, but I have absolutely no idea. Let's hope for the best. We'll see how this goes. So if you're wondering why it's slimy looking under there, it's aloe vera gel, and that's all. Nothing else weird. So, I don't remember what I was talking about. I think the differentials before I left. So, other upgrades I did, and they're still the front Dana 30 factory and Dana 35 rear, but I upgraded the gears, so now they're actually four by eight, eight gears, which is going to give me a lot more torque, which has helped improve. Is that my oil? oil? Yay. Can you give it to me, please? My dad got me this. So here's... Oh, let's change the... Fully synthetic. So here's my gear oil for my um, diff differential. So my dad just came back with that. Oh, he got this too. And Rice Krispies. Big one. Rice Krispies is my favorite cereal. Although I'm starting to kind of get tired of it because I get it so much, but it's still my favorite, so it's okay. And then Freon, because that's another thing. When I got the Jeep, it does have AC, but there was no AC in it. And for the first couple of years, there was no AC. Took it to a place, we found out where the leak was. Now it does have AC, but recently I found out that I really haven't had AC because I guess the Freon started wearing out. So it was really low on Freon. Here's the new Freon. So refrigerant R134A, we converted it. It's actually really easy to do. So it still blows AC. But um, this is just to finish recharging it because it's a lot cooler than it was when I started my trip. But now we got to finish it. This is really going to be a really loose base video because I completely got distracted when my camera died and the cold sore. So sorry if this is not going to be as straightforward as I was hoping it would be. Okay, other things I've done to the Jeep. It started off as a three-speed automatic and without going into too much detail, long story short, I bought an AX15 off of somebody local here and I got it rebuilt for somewhere around a couple, I think it was $1,400. And after I got it rebuilt, I installed it myself. So I did a complete conversion. So now I have a completely rebuilt AX15 transmission. So now it's a standard transmission. It was a kind of complicated install. There was some stuff that had to be done. Um, as far as other repairs I've done, the wiring, I wish I could have rewired it, but I couldn't. So what ended up happening is my PCM is actually from a Grand Cherokee with a 4 liter. I don't know if that affects the performance or not, but I have a permanent check engine light on because of it. Somebody has an explanation for it online, but apparently if you find the same plug, the 50 plug PCM off of a Cherokee, you can still use it in the Wrangler. But for some reason, it reads it as incorrect at a certain code, and so it's always going to have a check engine light. Yeah. You know, there's so much stuff I did to it, but it's mostly repairs. Fuel tank, the muffler was replaced, still needs replaced again. What is it done? Okay, there's a lot of stuff. 
that I've done to the Jeep. And I can't really think of what they all are. So, mostly repairs, little things here and there. The seat is the best top. I honestly can't think right now. And this is my problem with the Jeep. I've done so much work to it, but when I stop to think about it, I can't think of all the stuff that's been done. I had the doors completely redone by somebody who didn't do a great job, so they're still a little clanky. I'm always having to adjust them. The hardtop is a CJ7 hardtop. Tailgate is a CJ7 tailgate convert conversion. I've done a lot of stuff to this Jeep, and I can't even think of what all of it is. I'm also getting eaten alive by mosquitoes right now, so I think I'm going to cut this video here. This is a really weird video. Yeah, um, the sky's really pretty right now. Getting eaten alive. I might have a cold sore. This thing is stressing me out, which is dumb because cold sores can happen from stress, but I only stress after I feel like I'm getting one. And I think I just got bit in the head. Are you kidding me? Okay, I'm going inside before something stupid happens. Okay. Hey guys, my name is Andrew. Um, I've been living in my 2017 Jeep Wrangler JK over the summer here in San Francisco. Uh, if you want to follow me, I'm on YouTube at Blue Jeep Life.